Hi, everyone. We're live at the Paste Studio in New York right now with Samantha Fish. Samantha, welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been very much in the Paste consciousness recently. You were just down at the Atlanta yes. studio, and now here you are. Um, and we appreciate you doing the show very much. You're playing PlayStation Theater tonight. I know it's been a hugely busy day in New York City, so yes. thanks for making this part of it. Well, thank you for having me. I love you guys. You guys have always been really good to me. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, keep coming back. We'll be here doing this. And uh, right now, we're about to hear three songs from Kill or Be Kind, your sixth solo album and first one on Rounder Records. It's out in the world right now. We're going to hear three songs from it. Yep. What's coming up first? Uh, we're going to do a song. I, I want to do some ones I hadn't done acoustic before, so buckle up, me. Uh, it's going to be great. Uh, Samantha Fish, uh, I guess I wrote the song. <laughs> Samantha Fish, Parker Millsap, and I co-wrote the song. Uh, it's called She Don't Live Around Here Anymore. Yep. front steps higher to a place you come to feel inspired she used to let you in the change your heart and invitations expire
Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. That sounds great. Uh, Thank you. So you worked with Parker Millsap mm-hmm. on that one, and there are there's a number of songwriting collaborations on yes. this one. Can you talk about some of the other artists that you worked with on uh, on the album? Um, Patrick Sweeney, Eric McFadden, Kate Perlman, Jim McCormick. Um, I think those are the. I think that's everybody. <laughs> My main collaborator songwriting wise has always been Jim McCormick. I just have known him a very long time, and we have a really good chemistry. And um, I don't know, I, I really like collaborating on the songwriting front just because you really learn so much from, from another person's perspective and their approach to songwriting. Everybody I've ever worked with is, you know, it, it seems like they approach a song from a completely different way than, than I do. And, and, and you just, you kind of play to each other's strengths and I, I feel like it, it yields really good results, you know, when you're trying to tell a story that's cohesive and melodic, it's, it's fun to write with others. Well, it sounds like um, in in addition to uh, to collaborating with other songwriters, that the songwriting maybe on this album has evolved away a little bit away from shreddiness and a lot of notes and playing all the notes. And um, although the, I mean, I, I've heard you shred many times. And I know the shreddiness is there, <laughs> but maybe a little it. more towards uh, describe like p- picking the notes that you really mean to play and concentrating more on melody and less on shreddy. Maybe you know I. Honestly, I think I picked that up when I was working with Luther Dickinson in the studio a lot. Cause, cause he, nice. has, he was here not too, too long ago. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I learned so much from working with him because he's one of my favorite guitar players and he produced a couple albums of mine. And, you know, he's like, if they can't sing the melody of, this, of the guitar solo or the guitar part, you know, it's like, it's just kind of like wasted words. And, and I, I, I always try to stick to that, especially when I'm like constructing a solo. And But, you know what? Also, there are songs on this album that didn't call for a screaming guitar solo. So, you know, you got to serve the song and, and, and do what's best for that. And um, I definitely tried to utilize the guitar in different ways on this record, just more textures and, you know, kind of ambient noises, stuff that you don't even know is a guitar, is a guitar on the album. But it's still, you know, it still has shredding moments. Uh, I just wanted to kind of spread out a little bit with it. Nice. Well, it sounds outstanding in this uh, in this iteration, this arrangement. Just you on on a guitar sounds wonderful, um, and so that's a testament to the to the songs themselves. So thanks for bringing it here today, and especially when you've got to rush out of here to a photo shoot to then go to uh, PlayStation Theater. It's a heavy big day today, so thanks for making this Thank part of your you, trip. Of course. Um, what's coming up second today? Uh, this is a song I wrote with Jim McCormick called "Love Your Lies." Got us. 
you. That sounds great, Samantha. Thank you. Um, can we? Well, let's talk more about Killer Be Kind and uh, the draw that Memphis has for you. Uh, so I know you went to Royal Studios, um, and this is, it's certainly not the first time that you've worked in Memphis. Talk about the, the reasons that you have for wanting to work there again and wanting to work with uh, Scott Billington as well as, as producer on the album. Well, Memphis has always held a really special place in my heart. Um, I just have always felt really comfortable there. I love the music that has come from there, especially Royal Studios. It's amazing. I mean, Al Green recorded all his hits there, and Peebles. They, they've got, they've got just so many incredible like musical artifacts in the studio, from like, you know, the Coke can that Al Green stomping onto his microphone, and or the Coca box. There's like a little wooden box in there. It's just cool. They there's so much soul and energy in that place, and it. it you can't help but be inspired when you're in a place like that. Um, and I just love the sound of Memphis horns and, and that kind of soul. There's just, there's a, there's a really incredible vibe. So I've, I've always been pulled there. We, we had some great luck there when we did wild heart and, you know, I was close to it when I did bell of the West. So I keep kind of ending up pulled to that area for recording. Um, Scott Billington, I met him. Uh, he, he's the one who introduced me to rounder records and, and then he, he ended up producing the album and we just, I, I thought we clicked really, really well. He, um, he gave me the opportunity to kind of spread out a little bit in, in areas where I, I really hadn't felt like I had explored and, and he was just really encouraging and we, we were on the same page creatively. So it, it was really cool. Nice. Good. Well, I'm stoked that you had that opportunity. I and mean, that's that vibe you're describing about Royal Studios is kind of the vibe that we're trying to foster here, too. I and mean, you're sitting in front of that, yeah. that, that giant metal can is Carlos Santana's 1973 South American tour documentary. Oh. We've got a lot of Memphis guys in here. I mean, there's a ton of Booker G, uh, Booker T and the MGs, that's amazing. You know, Otis Redding um, on all of these tapes surrounding you. So there are meant to be uh, or there literally are many, you know, friendly, friendly ghosts floating around here. I'm feeling it. In this I room. definitely feel it. And uh, yeah. Yeah, so we really appreciate you coming and vibrating this room the way that you do and adding to the to the entire vibe of the thing for, for the next artist to come in here and do it. So thank well, you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, so we've got more music. You're going to do one more off killer, be, be kind. What's coming up third? Uh, this one's called Fair Weather. And this is one I co-wrote with uh, Kate Perlman. So. <clears throat> Simple bond, a thought was true A naive heart to misconstrue Why did I get so close to you? What did I do? I thought that you would find your way Hollow words that you betray A bitter end, a sad cliche I can't stay so Farewell, my fair weather Farewell, my old forever Goodbye to a passing when the winds of change that blew you in So farewell, my fair weather All the time we had together Didn't mean much to you Someday, somehow, you'll see the truth Come and people go A punchline that comes on slow From a gentle break to a painful blow I did not know That you would be the one to take And break my heart so easily And give to me a black bouquet I can't relate So farewell my fellow To a passing when the winds of change it blew you in so farewell, my fair weather. All the time we had together didn't mean much to you. Someday, somehow, you'll see the truth.
together didn't mean much to you some days from how you see the truth hey 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 ah Thank you, Thank Samantha, you. for coming and doing this. Um, there's a lot of stoked people on the other side of these screens. You've got a great oh, yeah? crowd. Brazil's here. Of course, Brazil is here. We love hey, you, Brazil. Brazil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Warren, Ohio, Charleston, Wichita. Poland's here. Norway's here. Poland. France is here. Yeah, man. There's a very international crowd, wow. all happy with what you just did. So thanks for doing that. Thank you, guys. And Thank you. Uh, there are many people in New York City who are about to be able to enjoy what you do live at the PlayStation Theater. And you're working hard all weekend. You're at the Tupelo Music Hall in New Hampshire tomorrow night, and then the Sinclair and Cambridge Mass on Sunday night yeah. off for hopefully you get uh, you get a week to hang and just and do Christmas with people. I got a couple days to do Christmas and then we're we're hitting it again but yeah. yeah, and then gotta, back out on, on Jam Cruise. You're on, on Jam Cruise January 7th through the 12th, which will be a ton of fun. Yeah. And, I mean, there are just seemingly never-ending dates here. There's dates announced all the way through September of 2020. A lot of festival stuff, so you're in demand and working hard. All the details are up at samanthafish.com. Did we tell you about the festival, about the Samantha Fish Cigar Box Guitar Festival? I want to hear more about it. New Orleans, January 15th through the 11th. I'm putting on a festival, so uh, really excited. I'm going to be playing at it, um, but that's... You know, as well as all the other dates we're going to be doing. If you want a road trip, January in New Orleans isn't that bad. Dude, that sounds amazing. Yeah, hopefully everyone who's tuned in right now is going to be able to do it. Um, Argentina's here. Syracuse is here. There's a ton of people who are really happy with with your music. So hopefully they're able to make it down to New Orleans January 15th, you said? 15th through the 18th, yeah. Or come to the PlayStation Theater tonight, too. Nice. Thank well, you. enjoy it and travel safe between all those dozens and dozens and hundreds of tour dates from now until forever. And please come back and visit us whenever. Man, we're, we're here doing this. We always love to see us. So thanks for coming. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs>